Hi, my name is Roya Majarat, family physician. I work at Simi Valley at UCLA. Today we are going to talk about fever in children and mainly fever in children older than uh, 90 days. Fever is a uh, abnormal elevation of the body temperature that is because of the, some specific bio, um, secretions, chemicals that secretes that is controlled by the nervous system or brain. There is multiple ways that we can check the temperature in kids. Uh, it can be rectal, it can be um, oral, axillary, um, ear, you know, tympanic membrane, or the new version that is a smartphone checking the temperature. Uh, the rectal one is the standard one that is, uh, checks the core temperature. Um, the oral is usually less than uh, rectal. It's maybe one degree Fahrenheit less than um, rectal. Uh, they have to put it under their tongue, but we have to make sure they are not breathing uh, by mouth a lot. You know, the kids that they have difficulty breathing and breathing by mouth, so maybe this is not a good one to check. And also, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they should not have any hot water or cold water, so that can change the temperature. Um, axillary also is the other one. That This one is also lower than core temperature, So, but we have to make sure it uh, contacts the skin when we are checking the temperature. Um, infrared uh, thermometer, maybe this is the closest one to uh, rectal or core temperature that uh, checks the temperature from the um, tympanic membrane uh, or eardrum. Um, so a smartphone is the new one, but this one we don't recommend because it depends you know, where you put it, it may not be very sensitive. So there are different uh, opinions that how to use, which one to use. Uh, mo uh, some of them they say, you know, for kids younger than four, use the rectal thermometer. But most of them they recommend to use uh, for four, less than four weeks, we use the axillary. And after that, use the um, um, tympanic membrane or the axillary, because it's the easiest way for the parents to use. But we have to know that these are not the standard if we use it. So it is higher um, if we use with the oral the temperature is higher. Um, so the normal body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit, but it can change. Younger kids, they have a little higher temperature. Uh, it changed, um, you know, in the morning it is less, in the evening usually it goes a little higher. And, you know, uh, if the kids, kids do, they do activity, it can increase it. So there are some different, you know, variation, but the mean range is 98.6. Elevated body temperature can be fever, as I said, it's coming from the brain. Brain is controlling or it's hyperthermia that we are not discussing here. That's a different, you know, if their kids are in the uh, warm, hot environment or as they are taking some medicines that can increase the body temperature. But that, that, that's not controlled by, uh, by brain. And that's actually maybe the dangerous high, uh, high blood, uh, high uh, temperature in kids. Core temperature, 100.4 and higher, we call it fever. It's a little different with the age of the kids. So younger than 90 days, uh, rectal temperature, 100.4 and higher is fever. In three months to 36 months, again, uh, 100.4 to 102, we call it fever. And anything higher than that, um, if there is no focus for the infection, for the fever, um, it can be a con fever of the concern. Um, for older ki uh, children, you know, we check the oral um, temperature 100 to 103, we call it fever. Anything more than that, if there is no focus, you know, is a um, concern. Uh, what is the benefits and the harms of the fever? So fever is actually a res by our biological response to the, you know, when we get a virus or we get the bacteria, our body is fighting with that. That's why we get fever. And actually that fever will help to make the virus and bacteria weak. So it's helping to fight with them. So we really don't want to drop the temperature if child is comfortable. But if the temperature goes more than 104, then at that time, you know, they get uncomfortable. They, they, they don't drink, they get dehydrated. At that point, you know, they will benefit to get the medicine um, to drop the fever. Well, the harm, if for normal kids, usually there is no harm. But if kids, they have some underlying problem, like, you know, they have heart disease, they have uh, lung disease, or they are in shock, or any medical problems that they really 
we have to keep their metabolism low so they may need the medicine because they, they can't, their heart cannot tolerate low oxygen. So those kids, you know, they will benefit. But normal kids usually, um, they don't need, if they are comfortable, they don't need, we don't need to give the medicine to drop the uh, temperature. And management of the fever is actually management of the illness. We really don't have to treat the fever each child is comfortable. Just see what's the reason for the fever. So fever is not an illness, so it's just a physiological response to something. In a um, healthy child, uh, we don't have to treat the fever. It does not cause brain damage. Uh, fever will never cause a brain damage, unless it is hyperthermia, that's different. But fever will not cause brain damage. And it, it doesn't, if we treat the fever, that doesn't make them you know, get better faster. You know, if they have flu, they have 103 fever. Um, that doesn't mean if we treat the fever, the flu will get better faster. And um, the first thing, we have to make sure we hydrate them. If still they are uncomfortable, then we can give them medicine. And uh, it doesn't tell us if they respond to the medicine, it doesn't tell us it is viral or bacterial. And we don't have to wake them up in the middle of the night if they have fever to treat the fever. And uh, we have to be careful we don't give the other medicines like cough medicines, other cold medicines with the, uh, these medicines, you know, uh, for the fever because most of this, those cold medicines, they have the same thing. So if they can get uh, toxicity if we give them both of them. And we have to make sure we check, um, we give them based on their weight and not the age of the child. So the medicines that we use, the common ones, Tylenol and um, or acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Um, we never use aspirin in children. We can use it in adults, but not in children for fever. It can cause Ray syndrome and it's very dangerous. Uh, so the reason we treat the fever, if kids are in the shock, you know, we want to drop their metabolism. If they have heart disease, if they have uh, dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, they cannot drink anything uh, because they are very uncomfortable. We can give medicine to drop the fever. Uh, if it is more than 104, if they are discomfort, head trauma, uh, cardiac arrest, so anything that we want to drop the metabolism, that's the indication to treat that fever. Um, acetaminophen is the first choice or Tylenol is the first choice because it has been there for a long day, too many researchers, so that's maybe the safest one we can use for the kids. But um, the second choice is ibuprofen, uh, which usually we don't use for kids younger than six months old. Uh, but if there is some inflammatory problem with the fever, then um, if you want to choose, you know, you can use ibuprofen, but acetaminophen is always the first choice. We don't recommend to combining the medicine, you know, giving both of them, you know, temperature is high, we give Tylenol and ibuprofen, both of them. We give one of them, um, but if they're still uncomfortable, you know, and the, the next dose is not due, then we can try the other one. But usually we don't recommend to do that because there's always a chance you may forget to give both of them the same one again twice and it can cause toxicity. Um, for, uh, we don't use uh, acetaminophen for kids younger than 90 days unless it's recommended by a doctor and ibuprofen for kids younger than six months. Um, but for any kids 90 days and younger, if they have fever, so this topic is for kids for more than 90 days. Any kids younger than 90 days, they have to be seen by a doctor if they have a fever. External cooling, we don't recommend external cooling unless they, if there is hyperthermia, that's different. You know, sometimes kids, can, they, they can have fever and they also have hyperthermia. If there is, we are concerned that there is hyperthermia, it can help. But for fever, usually we don't do that. But if you want to do first, you have to give a medicine 30 minutes before the cooling. And then after 30 minutes, you, um, you can use that um, cooling. And usually we just recommend water. Some Kids, some parents, they use alcohol that's very dangerous. They can absorb it by their skin. So if you want to use water, you know, in the temperature of 85 degree of Fahrenheit. Treatment response, as I said, uh, we don't check the fever to see if the fever is up and down. We just 
we have to evaluate the kid to see how the kid is doing. You know, if something else is happening, if they are getting neck stiffness, if they are getting, you know, uh, bleeding under the skin, we call it, you know, purpura or petechia. You know, if something, or they are getting, looking very sick or ill, if something like that happened, we have to evaluate that. We really don't have to make sure, okay, temperature went one number up, one number down. So that, that's not our concern. Just uh, the child, how sick the child is, or if new symptoms are happening. So the duration, um, just the same, you know, it, it just depends um, if we have, if they need to get the medicine, if they want to be comfortable with the medicine, otherwise, you know, there is no duration, we don't have to treat it. But if the kid, they have uh, fever more than two to three days, maybe they need to be evaluated again, you know, or they be seen again to see maybe some bacterial superinfection is happening or something else is happening, they're having fever. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening.